After maxing a level 3 skiller at the very end of 2023, I've decided to dive into uncharted territory by making my first ever true main account. I did have a main account in the past, but the farthest I've progressed was the Dragon Slayer and Monkey Madness quests. I've never gotten a fire cape, never did barrows, definitely didn't do any GWD, and I haven't even done desert treasure before. So forget what you know about my past accounts and that I haven't even touched a combat set since 2014, and join me while I play OSRS in its intended fashion for the very first time ever. This is Maxing a Main. Welcome back to episode 8 of Maxing a Main. We left off last video by finishing up Druidic Ritual, and in this episode, since we're trying to complete as many quests as possible before actually physically training our stats, we are going to be doing a lot more quests. Hey, since we're going for the quest cape anyway, we might as well do these while at a low level to avoid pointlessly training our stats that we could get for free while questing. That way we can get early levels out of the way, as well as getting some quests checked off for the quest gate. First quest we're going to be doing is Recruitment Drive, which was my second favorite quest in the game. And that's because the first time I completed it back in 2008 was without a quest guide, and I really enjoyed trying to figure out all of the puzzles. But of course, since we're in 2024, I am going to be using the Quest Helper plugin. Make some guesses in the comments what my all-time favorite quest was back in 2008. And if you guess correctly, I'll give the first correct answer to Mill Cash. I transferred it from my other account specifically for this giveaway. And I'll even give you guys a hint. It gave me, a 12-year-old boy at the time, what I thought was a super cool-looking item as a reward, even though the item wasn't actually useful unless used in a very specific circumstance. So yeah, if you guys have any guesses, put them down in the comments. And you could possibly win 2 Mill Cash. I used to think that the Initiate armor was the coolest armor in the game, and I wanted it so, so bad when I became a member for the first time because it was the first time ever seeing white armor, and it came with a free gold trim. Not gonna lie though, I was kind of disappointed when I found out the regular white armor was technically an upgrade from it, and then a year later when I found out about Frost Light armor, I thought it looked even worse than the white armor, even though white armor still does look pretty cool. But the reason I didn't really like Frost Light was because the gold trim on the armor wasn't as gold as the Initiate. Back in the day, you used to have to change your character to a female because this puzzle from Sir Lee made you defeat him even though he is coded to be an invincible warrior. The answer to defeating him was to figure out that when he says, no man can ever defeat me, was that you had to swap genders at the makeover mage to a female to make him no longer invincible because you're technically no longer a man. Fun fact, back in November of 2022, they updated the puzzle so anyone can defeat him, but changed the line to now say, no blade can ever defeat him. Making the puzzle's new solution to use a non-bladed weapon, such as a Warhammer, or to defeat him simply by punching or kicking him to death. So if you already did the quest before November of 2022 and didn't know they updated it, now you know. But anyway, Recruitment Drive has been completed, giving us one quest point, 3000 GP, the ability to switch to Falador as a spawn point, the ability to wear Initiate Armor, as well as 1000 XP in Prayer, Herb Lore, and Agility, and it also brought us up to 62 quest points. And claiming those rewards brought us all the way up to level 10 herb lore. Oh yeah, I forgot, we also get this initiate helmet. Bruh. The next quest we're going to bang out is Sleeping Giants, which upon completion is going to let us do the Giants Foundry minigame sort of training style thing. I've never actually done Giants Foundry before. Supposedly, it helps you save a good amount of money hitting 99 smithing. And the reason I never did it is because I think I already had level 99 smithing on my skiller when this minigame came out. So it's going to be really cool to complete this and be able to try it out as a training method in the future. Oh, by the way, for any of you guys who did not know this, I do this all the time on my level 3 skiller for farming runs. If you have an outfit that you want to wear directly from your inventory while you're still in the bank, and you have the menu entry swapper plugin, just take your outfit out. And then on each one of these outfits, you only got to do this once. Hold the shift key on your keyboard, right click it, and change swap, shift click, to wear. Do that for each of your items. And now, let's put the stuff back in the bank real quick. And now, whenever you take it out, you just hold shift, and you could wear it all. And there you go. Also, I just want to thank you guys for helping me reach 9,000 subscribers. I seriously can't believe it. Thank you guys so much for all the support. The next goal that I'm going for is 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I really think with your guys' help, we can definitely get there. So if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. The guide is recommending that we have ice gloves. I don't really think it's necessary since it says it only allows you to skip filling and using a bucket of water. But that reminds me, we do have to get ice gloves on this account. It's super easy to do. I got it done on my skiller even. So I'm going to add that to my list of items I want to get on this account. And we'll get them in a future video. 
Oh, that's cool. I didn't know Quest Helper did this. I don't know if this is new because I've never noticed it before, but it gives you an actual path to follow to the next steps. That's pretty cool. Don't know how long that was in the game or if it's just for this quest, but I kind of like it. These are some pretty cool hill giants. I really like the look of these guys. This is the first time I've ever actually been over here ever in the history of the game. Sleeping Giants has been started. So I guess this is the tutorial on how to do Giants Foundry. And it's something I'm really looking forward to trying out in the future. I think you get a smithing outfit from here that helps you with smithing XP. I'm not entirely sure though. Okay, so I think I'm kind of getting the hang of this now. I'm kind of getting the main idea of it all. Still going to need a guide though to show me what the best thing to make is because when I was on the Crucible, I had no idea what I was making. There we go. Sleeping Giants has been completed, getting us one quest point, 6,000 smithing XP, and the access to the Giant's Foundry, giving us a total of 63 quest points and level 33 smithing. You now make iron plate bodies, steel med helms, and steel crossbow bolts. And the next quest we are going to complete is going to be Fight Arena. Fight Arena is going to get us 12,175 attack XP as well as 2,000 smithing XP, which is going to be super helpful to avoid some additional attack training. I'm going to be using the edge of a lever. Hopefully no one's here to kill me. Well, this guy's going to. Hopefully nobody's here. But I guess we'll see. I shouldn't have taken my graceful. All right, no one's here. Good. And fight arena has been started. Here's another armor I used to think was really cool back in the day, simply because it looks like iron armor, but it has different color shoulders. I used to think it was always really cool to see one defense pure as PKing with the Kazard armor instead of an iron plate body. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have brought some food and uh, a weapon. Maybe I might be able to get through with prayer? I don't know. Oh, he's level 63. This is going to take forever. 12 seconds later. I'll be back. I'm going to go grab some magic gear. This is going to take ages. There we go. Much better. Yeah, there is no shot I would have been able to do this by punching and kicking. That's crazy. I know I don't actually have to kill General Kazard, but I'm getting full XP here. It's not like the regular quest XP where you get less. So I thought I might as well just sit here and just far cast this guy. Get maybe a hit points level and a magic level. And there we go, level 41 magic. We can now cast Wind Blast, which is cool because it brought us up to the next tier of magic spells. Here is level 37 hit points as well, bringing us up to level 51 combat. And there we go. Fight Arena has been completed, giving us another two quest points, 12,175 attack XP, 2,175 smithing XP, and 1,000 coins, bringing our quest points up to 65. Doing that quest got us up to 44 attack and level 14 thieving. And another combat level, level 52 now. Nice. And the next quest up on the list is going to be Plague City. Plague City is going to allow us to get some mining XP, and it's going to let us use the Ardo and teleport once we have the magic level to do so. It's also one of the quests that we're going to need to do Biohazard, which I think is the last quest we need to do in order to get the Arty Cape 1, which is something I'm really looking forward to because of the Monastery Teleport. All right, Plague City has been started. Wow, Plague City has been completed already, giving us one quest point, 2,425 mining XP, and an RD teleport scroll to teach us how to tell you there. I thought this quest was going to be a lot longer. I think I was thinking of Biohazard, which we are going to be doing this video as well. We're not going to be doing that one just yet. But completing that quest brought us all the way up to level 18 mining. Very nice, very nice. The next quest on the list is going to be Monk's Friend. Supposedly, this one's very short as well. I don't know if I've ever done this before. I guess there's not a jug here unless I'm missing it, so we're going to have to teleport back to Varrock and buy one. It's kind of annoying because then i got to go back into the wilderness to get back here, but we got to do what we got to do. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to teleport to Drainer Village and buy one from the wine guy. Give me your jug of wine, mate. Give me your jug of wine, mate. You guys like that Bodhi impression? Give me your jug of wine, mate. You guys didn't already realize by now, but I'm sure you already have. I am an expert at doing impressions. Hey guys, Editor Relic here. I tried to find a clip of Bodhi saying, give me your money, mate, but I literally couldn't. I didn't know what to search on YouTube. So if you guys could find a clip of that. Let me know. I don't know if I just suck at searching things or what, but uh, yeah, I was going to put that in as a clip. It was going to be a little funnier, at least I hope. But uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. All right, Brother O, let's get this quest started.
What? Did we just become best friends? Yup! This is your celebration. Monk's friend has been completed, giving us one more quest point, eight law runes, a 2,000 woodcutting XP, bringing our woodcutting level from level three up to level 14. And the next quest we're going to be doing is Hazeel Cult. I know for a fact I've never done this one before, and it should give us some pretty decent rewards. All right, today is the next day, so I'm sorry about my morning voice, but I looked up the rewards of this quest, and there are a couple different sides that you could take for different rewards. If you side with Hazeel, you get the Hazeel Mark, but if you side with Serral, you get the Carnelian Armor. And the Carnelian Armor looks like the Castle Wars 1 Armor, so that's the side that I'm going to be taking. So if I ever do want to get that armor set, I don't actually have to get the Castle Wars Armor, and the Carnelian Armor should blend in. Not sure if the colors are exactly the same, but I guess we'll see. The Hazeel Mark is kind of lame anyway, to be honest. Also, something I realized while running here is we no longer have to use the Edgeville lever to go into the wilderness to come back to Artie. I could just buy some teleport tabs in the Grand Exchange, or I could do what I did in a previous video and go to someone else's house that could teleport me to Artie. I don't know what I was thinking, risking my graceful and everything in the wilderness earlier, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I just wasn't thinking. And there it is, the Carnelian armor. I could see that the colors on the shoulders are a little different, but it's not really noticeable. So I'm going to be dropping a bunch of these and picking them up just so that we could have a bunch of these in the bank. Hello, Freaky Forester. Let's get some rewards up in here. I think this might be the first Freaky Forester event that I have gotten on this account. There we go. We got the later hose and pants. Absolutely stunning. I do realize that doing a bunch of quests in videos isn't the most entertaining content, and I'm sorry about that. But since I've never had a main before, as I said a million times, I think this is the most efficient method of actually doing this because we are going to be going for the quest cape eventually. And trading these stats is just not really worth my time if we can get them for free during quests. So I do apologize that the last two videos have just mainly been me doing quests. I know it's not the best, but I'm trying to make it entertaining for you guys. So I hope that you understand where I'm coming from because there's no point in wasting time training a bunch of newbie stats that I could just get done while doing these quests anyway. But don't worry though, in the next video, I'm going to be going for a couple of skilling outfits maybe that could help us in the future. But anyway, here we go. We have kind of completed Hazeel Cult, giving us 5 GP and no quest points. Absolutely beautiful. I think this might be the only quest in the game that has a fake quest completed screen. But anyway, here's the real quest completion screen. We have now completed Hazeel Cult, giving us 1 quest point, 1500 thieving XP, and 2000 GP. It brought us up to level 18 thieving. But I'm going to go run this armor to the bank because each plate body is 9 kilograms. And then we can get started on the next quest, which is going to be... Where is it? Sheep herder. No, no, no. Get back here. Are you kidding me? No. Oh my god, why? No, no, no. Get your ass back here, boy. No. Oh my god, come on, dude. No, 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 no. You go that way. Come on, sheep. Oh, come on, get out of there. This is so miserable. Why do I gotta move back? Get out of here, dude. Bro, get out of the way. Oh my god. Alright, I guess I gotta go get another sheep. That's super annoying. Perfect. I guess the sheep was never gonna move. Wait, hello? There we go. Okay, good. Oh my god, what? This is actually kind of brutal. Alright, finally, Sheep Herder has been completed, giving us a nice four quest points, bringing our quest points up to 72 and 3100 GP. Next quest on the list is going to be Biohazard, which I think is the last quest I need to do in order to get the RD Cape 1. Biohazard has been started. I'm literally forking this guy to death. I could be wrong, but I think that you weren't allowed to teleport with this stuff before, but you can now. Just something I remember was you couldn't teleport while holding something during this quest, and I think it was this stuff, but it doesn't seem to be a problem now. While we're here in Varrock, might as well buy some arty teleports. I'll only buy 10 because we're not going to need them too many times, I don't think. But now, we can teleport to Artie. 
And there we go, Biohazard has been completed, getting us all the way up to 75 quest points. It also gave us 1,250 thieving XP, access to West Arty, and the combat training camp as well. And completing that brought us up to level 20 thieving, and we can now steal from Silk Stalls, which is the perfect amount that we need to do the Arty Cape 1. So from what I could see here in the easy tasks, we have all the requirements to do everything other than the fishing trawler, which you need 15 fishing in order to do. We only have level 3. Three, but I know the fishing contest gives some fishing XP, so I'm not sure how much it is, though. But let's check real quick. Oh, you need 10 fishing? Okay, so we can't do that yet. But I was just looking it up. In the Taibo Wanai Trio quest, we have everything that we need to do in order to do that. Because the only requirements are 15 agility, 30 cooking, and level 5 fishing. But the level 5 fishing is boostable. But in order to do Taibo Wanai Trio, we need to do the Jungle Potion quest. And lucky for us, we have absolutely everything we need in order to do the Jungle Potion quest, which was just Druidic Ritual. So let's go do Jungle Potion, and then we'll do Taiba One Eye Trio, which should get us enough XP in order to do the Fishing Trawler. So it says here if you want to do Zogre Flesh Eaters or Legends Quest, to grab one for each of those as well. So we're going to be grabbing three Snakeweed here. But it seems like we can't even get one, because I've been searching this for about 40 seconds, and we still have yet to find one. I don't know what skill it's using to try to find these, but whatever it is, is not high enough. Oh my god, dude. Come on. I've been here for a minute and a half at this point. Finally. Oh my god. No joke. It took about two and a half minutes to get this one grimy snakeweed. All right. That's two. Let's get the third one for Legends Quest in the future. All right. And six minutes later, we finally got our three snakeweed. Absolutely unreal. And apparently I need to grab an extra one of these as well for Legends Quest, so I guess we're going for two here. Oh, thank god, you don't actually have to search these ones. And then this one, we only need to grab one, which is fantastic. And then now, if I want to do Fairy Tale Part 1, I need an extra one of these as well, and it doesn't help when I keep getting attacked by these Brutu victims. Leave me alone! Oh my god, this guy. Leave me alone. I need an extra one of these for Zogar Flesh Eaters. Found that one pretty quick. Wonder if we find them all that quick. Let's hope. Guess I just got lucky on the first one, and we're going to be waiting here for a while. There we go. We're running out of prayer here. I probably should have turned it off. And Jungle Potion has been completed, giving us 775 Herblore XP, bringing us up to 13 Herblore. Now let's do Taiba Wanai Trio. And it appears we need a lot more stuff from the bank, which is kind of annoying because I forgot to check before I came here. So I'm going to have to run all the way back. Wait. It says 30 fire making. I thought it's a 30 cooking. Hold on. Yeah, the wiki says 15 agility, 30 cooking, 5 fishing, and the completion of jungle potion and druidic ritual. But on the quest helper, it says I also need 30 fire making. I'm not sure if that's true. I'm going to ignore it and see if we get stuck. Okay, so after this insane inventory that's literally full, hopefully that doesn't become a problem. We should have everything we need in order to do this quest. I had to buy a fishing potion, which boosts your fishing level by 3, so we'll have level 6 fishing because we need 5 to do this quest. And Taibo One Eye Trio has been started. Seems like Quest Helper is kind of bugged right now. Let me re-log. Yeah, it says right here, 30 fire making is a requirement. Ugh, that's super irritating. I was wondering why it wasn't starting on the thing. Yeah, I should have checked this, obviously. But yeah, we do need level 30 fire making. So all of this was a waste of time. Okay, so I looked into it. I need 30 fire making in order to burn Joger bones on a fire. Not sure why the wiki doesn't say that we need 30 fire making because they're not tradable. So I guess that was just a waste of time. But we can still do the fishing contest quest. We just need level 10 fishing first. And supposedly it's not boostable. So we're going to be stuck actually training fishing for a minute here all right level 10 fishing that really wasn't too bad it only took about 10 minutes ish but we can finally go do the fishing contest which i'm very excited about while we're here in draenor though i might as well head on over to the ham hideout and get a rusty sword i think we get them from fishing trawler but i don't want to camp fishing trawler right now i'll just go and i will pickpocket the ham followers until we get one. You only need level 15 thieving in order to pickpocket them. I'm at level 20. I probably should have brought a lockpick because we're already down all the way to 18 thieving. So I hope we could just get in, get it pretty quickly, and get out. Because we're now at 17 thieving. Alright, if I get caught again, I'm probably going to get kicked out. So let's please get it. 21 thieving, that's nice. 
brought us up to technically 19 thieving. If I was here to try to get the polished buttons, I would have had those already, which is nice. But I don't gotta buy those, I guess. And we're about to get caught. No? How have we not been caught yet? I have no clue how we haven't been kicked out yet. I've been caught seven times. Oh, nice. Perfect. We got the rusty sword. We barely had to pickpocket these people. I didn't even get kicked out once. I don't know how. I got caught like nine times. And yeah. All right. Cool. Happy with that. All right. Fishing contest has been started. Okay. So besides the running, that quest literally took 35 seconds to complete. But here we go. Fishing contest has been completed. Bringing us up to 77 quest points and giving us 2,437 fishing XP. Brought our fishing level up to... Up to, up to 18. Nice. And now we can go do the fishing trawler. All right. We got everything we need to do the fishing trawler. And then we can go bang out all the other stuff for the arty cloak. Figured I might as well pick up some swamp paste and actually do a round of fishing trawler instead of just failing it. Even though I think it takes a little longer to finish it regularly. I just figured that there is an off chance that if we get a piece of the fishing trawler outfit, that would be a nice little bonus here. But it does take on average four and a half hours in order to get the full set. So the chances of us actually getting a drop are pretty slim. But hey, it's not zero. Might as well give it a shot. Didn't realize you get construction XP from this, but we just got level 10 construction, which is really nice because that is one of the goals that we were going for anyway with lamps. So now I can go back to using lamps on Slayer instead of construction, which is very nice. All right. Fishing trawler has been completed. Let's see if we get any rewards. I highly doubt that we'll get anything good. We did get up to 11 construction though, which is cool. Let's see if we get anything crazy and no. Yes. Oh my God. We got the... <laughs> We got the angled boots and a rusty sword, so I wasted my time getting the rusty sword before. But who cares, man? We got the angler boots? That's actually crazy. Oh, and we got level 19 fishing, which is cool as well. I cannot believe we actually got a drop. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> cool. <laughs> as I said, the whole set usually takes about four to four and a half hours to complete. We got the first piece on our first game. But all right, let's start the Achievement Diary quest helper on the Easy Arty Achievement Diary. And the first thing we got to do is view Alex, Hunter, Emporium, and Yan Isle, which we're pretty close to right now. First step down and on to the next. I didn't realize we were literally right next to the next thing we were going to do, which was identify the swords. And it turned out to be a bronze sword all along. Now let's have this man here teleport me to the Rune Essence Mine. All right, that's another one down. We got to steal a cake here. Beautiful. I'm going to sell the silk to the silk trader. I'm going to go talk to the pet lady. Beautiful. Now we have to use this altar. All righty. Now we have to use the dreaded lever to teleport into the wilderness. Hopefully nobody's there. Never seems to be, but you never know. Am I about to lose my whole graceful set? And the answer is no, I am not. Let's enter the combat training camp. There we go. And we have completed the Artie Easy Diary. That was insanely quick and easy, thankfully, because we did all of those quests earlier. Now let's talk to Two Pints and get our cape. UT full. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to pick up a couple more. Oh, I guess you don't have to drop it. All right. Well, we got five capes now. Let's use this antique lamp on we, can, we can't use it on slayer we have to use it on a skill that's over 30 so i guess i'll go with hit points because our hit points is tragically low right now and there we go 2500 hit points xp we didn't get a level but we got a little bit closer let's throw this bad boy on here and it looks amazing look at this thing we can now monastery teleport which is awesome it's gonna be good for farming runs and stuff like that in the future and it's just going to be a nice little free teleport to Artie if I run out of these tabs and we don't get 51 magic soon. But we made a ton of progress this video. We have a total of 77 quest points now. We have a total level of over 500 now. And I'm really excited to see where this account goes in the future. Progress is looking good so far. And I'm excited to get some more stuff done in the next episode, such as doing some more quests, as we could have guessed, and grabbing some items or outfit sets that we need to help train on this account in the future. Hope that you guys are enjoying these videos. I know I really enjoy making them. And thank you guys all for the support that you've given me so far. It truly does mean a lot. But with all that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.